Shakespeare was, in a way, saying farewell to his own <clears throat> writing with that play. And I'm wondering if that has any secret meaning with Beethoven's his suicidal thoughts that he, he expressed in the Heiligenstadt Testament. Well, there's no, this followed the Heiligenstadt, and at the very least, he, he was suffering greatly. And that when you're suffering greatly and you're an artist, that's called material. One of the great things about being an artist is that no matter how bad th things are, it's still material. Mm. <laughs> you will use it. You need it. Um, so, you know, I've been, you've been acquainted with suffering, so you use it. But that doesn't mean I'm suffering. I'm writing a suffering piece at all. It doesn't mm. necessarily mean that at all. When he was writing the Heiligenstadt Testament, he was finishing the second symphony which is absolutely a comic piece. And The Tempest is surrounded by two very friendly sonatas, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He wrote in that letter basically saying, I, I, I've thought, of course I thought about killing myself. Who wouldn't? <laughs> For, if you're a musician and a composer and you're going deaf, who wouldn't think about killing yourself? Plus the fact that he, had, he was in physical sheer pain a lot. And that was in addition to the deafness. And finally, he says in the letter, I can't imagine ending this life until I've done what I know I'm capable of. And he knew he was just getting to the point where he was writing what he had always envisioned but hadn't figured out how to do yet. And that was, he was already getting into it with the piano sonatas, um, including The Tempest. As a composer, in Mozart and Haydn's day, they never thought about what was going to happen to their music after they died because nobody ever cared about that. The first composer whose music stayed in the repertoire was Handel, who died when Haydn was already in his 20s. Mm. And the idea that your work could be immortal, it could be part of a permanent repertoire, was, was not, didn't exist really until Beethoven. And he, he did use the word immortal. He mm. said he talked about immortality. And when you, when you have this idea that your work can be part of a permanent repertoire, it changes you. I'm not saying it makes you a better composer, but it makes you a different composer. Mm. And one of the things at the end of my Mozart book I ended up saying is that Beethoven wrote for humanity. Mozart wrote for people. Mm. And it's a different mindset. I'm not saying one is better than the other, it's just different. But Beethoven was devoted to, to he believed that his talent was owed to humanity. Even though he didn't like people very much, he did believe that and he worked, he, he worked himself to death to, to create something lasting and great for humanity. Another thing he does not mention, very interestingly, is he does not say, I must do what God put me here to do. He doesn't say that because he didn't believe it. He believed in God, but he didn't believe in miracles. He believed that God created his talent in a sense because his talent came from nature and nature was God, was the real scripture as far as he was concerned. But as far as being a, a, an important composer, a great composer, he would have said, I do that myself. I did that myself. Mm. Uh, somebody wrote an arrangement of the um, Fidelia once and wrote at the end of the arrangement, finished with the help of God, and Beethoven wrote under it, mm. man, help yourself. Help yourself, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember reading that. <clears throat> but he had this terrible crash, and you know, well, that's what happens when you have a disability. You deny, and then you go into despair, and you crash, and you either pull yourself up or you don't. He pulled himself up. But if you look at his production in that period, there is not the least glitch at all. He was enormously productive that summer. Mm. And I know that if you, that it has to come out of your guts or it's no good. It's like any other art. Every art is like that. Mm. If it doesn't come out of your guts, it's no good. I mean, mm. coming out of your guts doesn't mean, doesn't ensure that it's going to be good. <laughs> A lot of art comes out of the artist's guts and it's no good at all, but it still has to. Right, And that's where technique comes in. I mean, Beethoven wrote the Holy Song of Thanksgiving after an illness, you know, that's directly from his life. In Opus 132. In Opus 132. And that is the simplest music in the world. It's mostly quarter notes and half notes. It's very even. 
there's it's almost impossible to imagine any simpler music but he had such technique that he could make that one of the most one of the most sublime things mm. Um, it's absolute magic, and it's a combination of how much he cared and how invested he was in it emotionally, how it related to him directly in his life in that case, but also what 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 skill he had, what what seasoned, brilliant skill he had to make something that simple work that profound, be that profound. How do you how do you see the performing arts and you know Beethoven's birthday in terms of? the context right now in the world where we are. Art should be tremendously important now because it deals with the spirit and it deals with emotion and it deals with things like courage and inspiration and exaltation and things like that. And those things should be tremendously relevant right now and surviving what we have to survive. But it's up to artists to make the case for themselves. It's not going to happen if artists don't go out and say that this is why you need us. Art doesn't always have to be beautiful and pretty. It can be horrifying. I mean, King Lear ain't pretty. <laughs> and The Tempest is, is, is not, a, not a happy piece. It's not happy making. Though it may be cathartic in, in, the, in Aristotle's sense that, that it puts us to a ringer that is ultimately redeeming and, 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 and exalting. And it should be in whatever form and whatever the expression is, it should be people communicating with people. It, it should not be for a technical, purely technical things. It should not be just for career advancement. It should be. That's why I think what Brahms felt is so important. He felt that it was it's something from my heart to your heart. As individuals, that's what art is. Mm. I think Brahms, by that point, on the Wagnerian model, everybody said art has got to have a world transforming quality, it's got to save the world, it's got to redeem culture. And Brahms said, I, I, culture needs saving. <laughs> German culture really needs saving, but, but mm. art can't do it. Um, what art is is person to person, heart to heart. And that's, that is supremely important.